Shalom, blessings, and shalom, brothers and sisters. I pray you are all taking care in your relationship, not religion, of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Uh, I know now that every now and again I will be, you know, led to come on, come on, on to this channel and, and speak what Father gives me to say, but I don't intend to be on it on a regular, consistent basis. Quite frankly, I haven't really been on it like that already. My ministry have been more uh, in person and, you know, um, amongst people of the world than on YouTube these days. Hallelujah for that. Uh, plus, my life's dynamic has changed a bit too. Uh, but I am coming on to say uh, what Father has given me to share with all those who would take heart to it, who have ears and eyes for it. Uh, but first, before I do so, I would like to humble myself in the event one will learn and, and grow to be better and father also uh but long story uh kind of probably won't be short but i will try my best to keep it short but i just discovered something not too long ago about myself i went recently uh through my own purging with father purging me though i didn't recognize it as that at the time but when you pray you know father if there is any fault sin error or unrighteousness be found in me please reveal it to me so i can acknowledge it confess it and repent of it because for me I, I want to be in good standing when i come face to face that's why i love conviction you really have to you know conviction leaves you know, you know you're feeling not that great but it's the it's your best friend especially when you come at the end of your days uh and i want to be totally transparent in who i am and as far as, as me walking the straight and narrow and it, it keeps it keeps us humble it keeps us in a position to where we constant constantly realize we need father to lead our lives because on our own we will go off track so when you pray uh you know father save me for myself and show me if i'm doing anything if there's anything in me i'm not aware of reveal it uh and, you, and when you believe in it when you pray and believe in it and hold father to do just that to trust him uh he will he definitely will and thank god he does by the power of belief and our trust holding him to everything his holy word tells us he is and can do and will do for us if we put trust and belief in him in our prayers that's the power of prayer and belief in prayer and that is what father did you know i i a while ago lost a a relationship uh, a valuable worth everything to me relationship that i held very dear dear and it was pure it was honest it was solid and i lost it i never had a relationship like it ever and i lost it and it almost destroyed me in the reality of losing it because to me i couldn't figure out why it was gone or taken away i never abused it uh I loved it more than I loved no other relationship because it was different. And to me, I lost in the way of feeling so rejected and abandoned and defenseless to ever getting it back. And it's, it not only made me upset and mad um, and confused, but it, it crushed my spirit also. So I was at that time very ripe for the enemy, for you know the devil, any demonic opportunity to come and pounce because I had raw emotions you know, dealing with it, you know, of, of now anger and this hurt and this resentment, you know, that are trying to come and just give me a hug, if you will. And it was like the enemy opening up his arms with a smile, inviting me to, you know, brood and complain and hate and just give in to how I was feeling, to take ownership of that justification I have and how I felt, how this is not right and I don't deserve this and all of that. And it was very difficult, uh, not to see the devil's point based on how I was feeling at that time. But, you know, I tell people and, and been telling people for years, saying and encouraging how we must not exalt our feelings above anything or anyone else that will give our feelings power uh, to now overcome us or be in a position to where we put any of it above God. Because when you do that, you really can't see God. You just see what you're going through and, and you exalting your feelings of what you're going through. And I had father in in a way looking at me, going through through uh, my loss, my pain, my my aggravation uh, in silence. He wasn't really speaking to me about it. You know, I just I knew he was there. Uh, it was like being in my ho my most hardest state, weeping down on my knees, and and I and, and he's just standing up over me with his hand held 
out, not saying the word, but just saying, you know, come with me, let's deal with it. And when you're in hurt mode, in anger mode, you tend to want the cart before the horse. You need answers and you need answers now as to why A, B, C, and D is happening. The father wasn't going to answer me uh, in the way that I wanted. I, I had to first choose him over the liar who would who would allow me to, to you know wallow in my pain until it corrupted me more against what I know is right. And then I had to choose father's way and his timing, meaning you know his way of of dealing with what I was going through in the way he prescribes, uh, which is just turning and leaning on him and in his timing of when he would speak to me about what I'm going through. And, you know, that sucks really in that moment because that could be months down the road, <laughs> but it's, it's human nature to want answers. Now it's so, it's so natural for us to put the car before the horse. But, you know, I have, I have to make the choice to choose months if it takes that, uh, and choosing father ultimately. Uh, so, of course, I rebuked the devil and, you know, the daily angst and all the negative emotions of my hurt and my pain. You know, he kept thriving back at me every single day because I'm going through a loss that has left me in such raw emotions, feeling wronged and confused every single day. Um, but what had happened was is that I, I had to burn my cross uh, and just deal with what was going on, deal with what was happening or had happened. And, and generally from my heart, despite raw emotions of hurt, pain, and all this, choose to forgive. Choose forgiveness every single day in spite of. Genuinely from my heart, I, I had to do this. And that's like choosing forgiveness and love for a person who is in your face, literally throwing a rock at you for no reason because they don't like you. But you are choosing to love this person and forgive this person accepting it's more them than you as you're getting stoned to death it's 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 that taking on what steven took on being stoned to death you know the flesh is being hurt and abused and there's no good reason and it wants to come back that either emotionally mentally or physically but the spirit is calling us to just love and forgive and pray for those who persecute us that's very hard to do and i've never really done it well i have but this has is this has been a different you know experience of it of really forgiving those who you who you love, who you think are just wronging you and who have just hurt you to your core. That's easier said than done. And the thing of it was that in my situation, it wasn't a them thing. It was actually me. What happened to me was my fault, ultimately. It was my reaping what I had sown because... As I started to walk the path of choosing to love and forgive, you know, my heart was widening. My grace, my mercy was abounding more. And I saw that with others, I literally noticed with people who father put me around, around the same time I was going through the loss of this relationship, that they were into some wicked things, sinful things. You know, they are not truly people who are walking with Christ fully. But there is decency and good in them. They're just misled and lost. But I had the capacity to see that and understand it in a way I was able to bring them closer to Christ. I didn't hold them to a godly standard or cut them off or segregate myself from them and vice versa. I walked with them. I ate with them. I had drinks with them. And in the midst of the environment, because of who I am, I brought Father into that place, into their hearts. I planted seeds. And actually, one time it led to the, the deliverance of someone dealing with self self unforgiveness and i noticed how i was able to do these things with these people who are not walking with christ they're not really actually brothers and sisters in christ but they're people who i love who i would give my life for in order for theirs to be saved even though they're not brothers and sisters in christ yet or officially yet shall i say and you know that made me think of my mother who passed away this year in september will be two years but she was a woman who had who had demons who had vices she chose and and put first those vices before me most of my childhood every time but she, she was a woman with a good heart there was decency and good in her but because she chose things that she developed years ago to cope with you know the trauma in her life growing up she became very dependent on those things uh and to me growing up i'm seeing how she is choosing just these things over me and it makes 
you know, a child feel sad and hurt, you know, not good enough. So self-protecting myself uh, is what I did. And most of my adult life, I gave her an ultimatum to choose me over those things. And as a mother, you know, who would not treat my own children as I have been treated by my own mother, the choice to me would be easy, but it wasn't for her. You know, I wanted her to give me what I considered her best and little did I know that was the best she could give me and offer me. So I I, I, I kept her away, not really understanding. Uh, I kept her away. I didn't have the components nor the capacity of considering what's really going on, what's really behind it all, and what she had gone through. Like I came to really know years later, I didn't have the capacity of love and grace and mercy to meet her halfway, to not hold her to my standard. Uh, as a mother herself, I, I know n now what I must have done to her emotionally, not being able to live up to my standards. But her being my mother, wanting to be a part of my life and my kid's life, uh, you know, I can only imagine how that felt. And, and, and when I came to that awareness, uh, it hit me for the first time. That's, that's why I had to lose that valuable relationship. That's why I went through that loss of my relationship with someone in order to see that I had been, had not been as loving and merciful and gracious in relationships that people have wanted out of me, most particularly my mother. I had to lose a relationship that I, I felt that I wanted, that I, that I was trying, that, that I fought for, that I really wanted. And it was, it was a, a relationship that I loved, but it was, it was over. It was gone. It was kaput. And I, you know, when I had a, a moment of self-reflection, I was like, dealing with these, with these people I'm around, I'm like, well, I have a tolerance for them. And I don't have that for my mother. I put her, you know, you know, at a, at a, at a distance. I, you know, I gave her an ultimatum. I, I had, I, I kept her away. I didn't really have the components and the capacity and, you know, I way something that she wanted pretty much as a mother. She wanted their relationship, but she couldn't, she couldn't meet my standards. Uh, so for me, I just closed the door and, and, and it wasn't always like that. I did give her chances, but then those chances ran out. But I, I, I it, it hit me for the first time. That's why I, I had to lose my valuable relationship and I had to lose that in order to see that I had just not been loving and merciful with her uh, as I wanted someone to be with me when I, when I lost that relationship and you know, how I, I hurt and ached in the loss of my relationship that I held so dear and loved so much. And that's probably how my mother felt and how, I, for years, you know, with her, made her feel. I didn't understand what she was going through uh, like I do now. I didn't have that capacity to give her grace and meet her halfway like I would now. How, if she was alive today, I would chase that woman down. But I had to go through my own reaping of what I had sown in order to be shown and purged of my error, my sin, and my wrong. Because the people I'm with are just like my mother. They come from trauma. They're, they're trying their best in their own way. That will never work like it never did for her. But I did have more tolerance to meet them halfway, to love on them and share my father with them. And I realized I'd never done that before. I never had that with my mother to give her that because I was not where I needed to be. Love was not perfected in my heart. And had I, had I not lost that valuable relationship that I held dear, I would have not been blessed to now have the art, have the heart that is more open in grace and mercy and love that has now been extended even more because I choose to genuinely want to love and forgive onward instead of hating onward of, of what was done to me and, I, and of how I feel at the time. But choosing after I, I just feeling like you've just been dumped to love onward instead. Uh, it just, it opened my heart even more to, you know, grace and mercy and love. And now I'm grateful for what I went through the anger I had, uh, you know, long left, but confusion, which that lingered on with me. So it's, it's, it's no more because now I have understanding and clarity and what it was all about. And, 
And that's how a father is and that's how he works. And if we don't allow the moment or emotion to overrule us, we can miss a great blessing out of it. You know, the devil knew my choice was going to be my downfall or a, a great blessing that makes me more untouchable to him. So in that moment, I also understand why he was working overtime in that situation on me. And I was deeply, deeply hurt, you know, upon revelation of my awareness of how I have, you know, treated my own mother with my past actions towards her. And I repented and I had to wallow in my own guilt and shame for a bit in order to to soak soak in my wrong and where I was wrong. Because sometimes we need to really soak in that that way we can get out, dry ourselves off, and now go do better onto others with no threat of allowing that type of mistreatment or lack of love to ever exemplify through us towards others again. The only solace I had was that I was, you know, I just wasn't there. I was ignorant. I was, you know, I didn't do it out of maliciousness. I was just self-protecting myself from a pattern of hurt. And I believe the whole time I, I, I did love my mother. I just couldn't have anything to do with her. And in some cases, that's legit. But my mother, that, you know, she wanted, she generally wanted uh, to have that relationship with her. And what, I'm sorry, she wanted that, she generally wanted that relationship with me. Um, but her demons were bigger. And she knew her demons were bigger. And she couldn't, she couldn't measure up up to the standards that I held her on but you know she she reached out and you know since I judged her too harshly I I, I stopped giving her chances most times because you know nobody wants to run to disappointment and hurt uh, but love is also exemplified through mercy and grace and if we're already at that level in Christ which I was not you know we should be having reaching that further level, developing those components that even in the event we get hurt by others to pray more and love more than distance ourselves more and shun them more. Um, and sometimes you have to distance yourself more. It just depends on the circumstance, but we can, we can, we can still exemplify mercy and grace through that. It should be an act of love more than, than less, no matter what anyone does, uh, that really won't affect us in order to, to have to self protect like the flesh will automatically try to do which will hinder the, you know, exemplification of love withstanding through uh, any, any any mental state that, you know, we go through that that's not really pleasant for us. So that is a testimony I wanted to share with you all because this should be our purging season before the most horrible one comes along for those who will have to unfortunately be refined by fire and made white with the old son of perdition time um, that is coming. So I just wanted to encourage you guys to, to go through these things now, better now than later. And we should all be weekly asking to be purged. If there is, if you know, saying, Lord, if, if I be at fault, if there's something I'm not seeing, if there's something I'm not getting uh, or understanding, reveal it to me. And for the most uh, importantly, too, during the time of my hurt and pain, losing that relationship, I knew I could have bet money. That I was in the right. But if you guys know me or this channel, you know I encourage not having a biased heart to anything. So knowing with my two cents, I was in the right. The other party was in the wrong. I also consider that even though I don't see it nor think it, I could possibly be wrong. I could be at fault. There could be something that I'm not seeing or getting. Uh, and I was very open and accepting to that. Even though clearly at that time, I'm not wrong. I had the objectivity to possibly allow the idea that I could be, I could be wrong. I could, I could be the one at fault. And I was open to that. Um, and when father finally showed me what the heck was going on and what it was all about, you know, it just, it humbled me. I was wrong. And I, 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 I was so for sure that I, I did nothing, but it was a purging. It was, it was a punishment and through my experience down the straight and narrow at times when I thought I was right, having to humble myself when shown I was wrong, I knew better to be open to that possibility against my better judgment or logical deduction. So please, in spite of, you know, bet of you betting the cows and chickens, you're right. Always consider and be open to the possibility that you're not. And before I move on to the word, I just want to also make atonement to the person that knows who they are, if they are listening to this, you know, I just want to say how incredibly sorry I am. I am fully 
where looking back at the position I put you in and how difficult it must have been for you as well. And I said things, horrible things that I regretfully take back and, and hope that you will forgive me. And I am very grateful to you of having so much obedience and loyalty more to father than to me. And, and ultimately how loyal you are to father, how loving you are to father is this is equally so to me because everything that you did benefited me and it, it grew me and it got me to a point to where I saw something not right with me and it propelled me to now be a different person, a more loving person, a, a more gracious, merciful person to others. And looking back at things, you did exactly what I knew you would do. But that's not to say it was easy for you to do it. And I'm just really glad that you you love Father more than anything. I know you love me. Back then, I questioned that. Going through what that going through what I did, I I didn't trust you anymore. But after what Father revealed to me, you know, your love is greater than I ever realized it could be. And you are forever the number one person I can completely trust as a family member in Christ and I am and have always been so blessed to have you and have known you and you have always been a great teacher that father always uses and I love you more now immensely more than I ever did before and I thank you for what you did that sh that showed me the right way that drew me to father more so he could work on me and help me do better and walk better because we both know where hypocrites go <laughs> And we, we always live a life to make sure we are in good standing. That's very important to both of us because so many are, are not uh, in good standing and they walk around and they think they are. And I just, I, we, know, we both know no one is above reproach with Father. And I know you were being obedient. I get it now and I understand it now. And I, again, apologize for my part and how, what I said and how difficult I made that obedience for you. But I'm I'm, I'm really happy you are a, a ride or die for father. And, you know, I know sometimes love is not always in the act of good feelings, but thank God for truth and wisdom and understanding and the rest of it that father blesses us with, which I'm not discounting. You know, honestly, I couldn't even count all the ways father loves us and blesses us. So I just wanted to say thank you and I hope you will forgive me. And... Uh, I just, I love you for, for everything that you are and everything that you did uh, in spite of. Uh, and I'm saying that to the person of whom it concerns. Now for the word. Uh, and I am getting the time of the end revelations and messages a lot with Father as they are always, they're always backed up by Daniel 11 and 12, which I am nonstop, nothing else consistently getting with father in regards to the war between the king of the south and the king of the north you know there are god's people the chosen the army who will be doing great exploits as as the word says but the message i'm giving is for us to really look at the word exploits when i used uh when i used to read and see exploits in the bible you know i would associate good miraculous things with that word and we should we we, we you can because that will happen and occur but there is a time coming under the anti-Christian power where many will go through such horrible things and judgments and many will die and many are going to be persecuted, you know, who retain their integrity and father in Christ and with Christ, you know, though they forsook the covenant and did wickedly against it. <clears throat> there will be people already who are strong in Christ or those with eyes wide open now who would join the strong in Christ knowing that they, you know, didn't live as 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 fully in Christ as they should, but now they're making the, they will make a decision to choose to to do that to be strong in Christ and live for Christ and and now die for Christ if that if that's the case in a great time of persecution, you know when others will be yielding to the you know the tyrants the man surrendering everything including their conscience to to him there will be those already uh who are soon to to convert fully, to stand their ground, resist temptation, and make, in turn, the tyrant himself ashamed of his attempts on them. And and when, and what I mean by that is that there are a many of our brothers and sisters, you know, Paul, Stephen, who chose to suffer rather than go against God, who, who are sin, you know, who who died for truth, which in turn, these these two out of many who did great, great uh, sufferings and sacrifices in the Bible, it, 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 it 
turned into great exports that led others that moved others in the same manner it was by faith by being strong in faith that they among so many did great exploits the knowledge of god uh is and always will be the strength of the soul and in the strength of that gracious souls do exploits those that know his name will put their trust in him and by that trust will do great things those these things are exploits and many in the time to come will instruct others of christ making it their business because those of us who know the knowledge of god should be communicating our knowledge to others about him like i am doing thank you father for the love of my life to do so because we are to instruct many as we can this alone is a great exploit but there are times coming to where what i'm doing won't be easy uh it won't be a thing it'll be life or death threatening to if you should attempt to do so publicly or boldly as i'm doing now and in times to come those who instruct others in the way of christ the bible tells us old and new testament that some will fall now that could be in death that could be in persecution of captivity of what revelation 2 10 talks about with you know those going into tri tribulation for 10 days the book of maccabees uh, much of it tells us uh uh Antichos, uh, what is his name? Um, Ant Ant Antichos, I can't even say his name, but he's spoken of in Daniel 11 of how many he slew in wars and, and, and those he, he killed in, in cold blood and, and the women he put to death along with, you know, hanging up their infants, horrible visions. But what I am conveying is, is these, these, these horrible acts these are also great exploits and you might ask how can this you know be reconciled with the justice and goodness of you know father of our god well at a time coming this will be the reflection of being made white tried by the fire in order to save the souls as corinthians 5 verses 5 through 6 says because at a time many must have their spots washed off they must be sanctified unto grace their sufferings for righteousness sake that will try and purge will show and do exploits exploits in the way of convincing god's children of the truth and the power of that that others understood and died for in order for you know those left behind to adhere to and it's just like what i was talking about in my testimony you know if i did not have if i have a if i had a limit on how much i loved people if i wasn't extending grace and mercy there will come a time for me to where they will be purged out of me because I can't enter into eternity in that state. I have to be purged. It has to be, I have to be refined uh, of that uh, in order to be made white. And for people who did, who are, who are not dealing with, um, who are not dealing with their own unforgiveness, who are dealing with hate, anger, addiction, if they do not deal with these things now, they will have to deal with these things in a greater horrible fashion later on because you can't enter into eternity in the state you're in like that and there might be people who you look at now who you know won't make it into heaven but in reality we don't know who will be able to pull off great and mighty exploits that are coming there are sold out celebrities you see who might in time turn around and die for jesus christ and that is a great exploit in their death that might move others to the truth that someone like that had the ability to save others when right now they are living a totally contrary uh different life uh that does not even come close to one and even having that idea or image about them that's why we must pray for the lost not only in a way of mercy that in the very act of it in what they do and carry out upon the turning to truth and father may it be a very great exploit that will move others for the honor and glory and for the advancement of the kingdom and father showed me i need to pray also for the great exploits to come through mercy that he will give that that will advance his kingdom more and give him glory more and so should we all we you know we want no one to perish but in the bible throughout many were persecuted many died many came to christ through exploits un unpleasant brutal fatal you know disgusting exploits not just you know good miraculous ones but horrible ones as well the devil wants every single one of us and we should want every single one coming at a time of the antichrist rule and reign 
like no other, we should want them to be saved in, in the way that not only do they have a second chance, but their second chance can be exemplified by a great exploit to move many towards truth, seeing that how others are being delivered for truth that they now believe in and have grace uh, in that their lives are now not of their own and they don't care to die for truth and, and father. It is coming to pass, brothers and sisters, and this is the time to advance the kingdom in our prayers to fight spiritually in the time to come because we, we want that no one should perish but in the way of their souls, not their lives, not their flesh, because their flesh, the flesh will turn back into what it is. It's man's souls we're fighting for. And exploits in the Bible are, are great miracles, but they can consist of great miracles through different acts. Some not pleasant, some most heinous, but the spreading of Christ, of, of our Lord and our Messiah and how we believe in him and follow him, even if it takes our life and we will not surrender or compromise our faith and our belief and our trust in him. It will result in time to come in a person's unpleasantness or even in their life. That will be a great exploit in itself to propel others, to, to move others. And we have the opportunity to do great exploits right now before that time of judgment comes and I encourage you all, I, I pray that you all be led to do so, to carry out the name of Christ and rebuke the workings of Satan that is stamped all over this world uh, and, and pray that many can turn to follow him and, and, and follow his way and in their act, create and do mighty great exploits that will move others in the same manner. Follow God and take care of your covenant, brothers and sisters. I love you all and I'm praying for you guys. Blessings and shalom.